Hello, this is Brendan, and in this episode, I'm going to uh, review this uh, painting which I just finished, like tonight, about, yeah, it happens to be evening, but uh, just a couple of hours ago. And so, uh, what this is, it's on the planet Kajik, and I'll give you a few seconds if you're a trivia fan and you happen to know Star Wars very well then uh, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but Kajik or Kajik, K-A-S-H-Y-Y-Y-K. Um, there's actually three Ys in it. And so, well, that trivia will probably be ruined by the title of the movie, uh, of this uh, of this video. But it's Star Wars, uh, the Wookiee's planet is called uh, Kajik or Kajik as I'm pronouncing it. And so you can see we have a hook, uh, <laughs> a hooky, a Wookiee over here, <clears throat> and he's hanging up there on this side. Let me do a little uh, extra layer here so I can write something. Yeah, like that. And so you have the Wookiee over here. Um, and for those of you who are studying the GIMP, as a lot of people are these days, that's just uh, hit the tab key on your keyboard and it'll take you out of, uh, you know, from this mode to this mode. It'll get you all those tools away so you can just focus on the art. And that's good if you have all your colors down already because if you have all the colors that you need and the only thing that you need to do is a uh, color selector and paint uh, around the, the canvas, then why look at all that extra stuff, right? And it's also nice for uh, display and presentation like this. So there's a Wookiee we have hanging from a tree up front. And then we have this, uh, you know, the perspective of uh, all these giant trees. What happened is, um, <coughs> excuse me, you know, we have the Star Wars movies, of course. But I read a book, a trilogy by Timothy Zahn, Z-A-H-N, and you can look him up. He wrote a Star Wars trilogy, uh, you know, a novel series called, uh, I don't remember or remember what it was called, but it was something like uh, The Empire or uh, Heir to the Throne was one of the books and uh, something else, Empire. But the whole trilogy was called the uh, the something trilogy uh, because of, you know, the, the, the main character that's in it. So, um, yeah, you can look it up, though. If you look up Star Wars Trilogy, Timothy Zahn, it's, uh, it's that one. And he described in one of the chapters the uh, this city, this Wookiee city that they went to. And it was so many years ago that I read the book that I don't really... I can't confirm whether or not this is uh, exactly as he wrote it, but as I remember it, and as my imagination told me at the time, there was these giant skyscraper-like trees, and I seem to recall that one of the sections of the tree was cut off, and on top of it they built a city, kind of like this. And they would come, you know, the Wookiees would be climbing around or show up out of nowhere because they can climb all over the place. They have sharp claws for climbing and, you know, suddenly be in the city uh, walking around and stuff. So they're like, you know, part animal, part native animal, and part civilized into this city kind of structure. I guess it'd be kind of like a New York where you get uh, metropolitan kind of feel, all different types of people there, but the Wookiees were the uh, the main uh, race in the neighborhood, so to speak. And, uh, of course, as is tradition from the movies, you have these little uh, sections back here. Let me see if my um, opacity isn't very high on that. I wonder why that is. Let me get a stronger color. Yeah, these back here, uh, you know, that's like their houses, the the regular native Wookiee houses. They, uh, you can see those in in the movies and stuff. They just uh, they make like spheres, not spheres. What do you call it? Like uh, almost like frisbees. Um, <laughs> you know, like plate plates that wrap around uh, the, the heavy portions of trunk. And in the movies, it was a lot more lighthearted. Uh, you know, not as uh, epic, obviously, because they can't. Especially back when they made the first movies, they probably couldn't make stuff like this or, you know, because then they didn't have CGI with the uh, the first three movies that George Lucas made. Later on, they did, but they're already kind of, you know, sold onto that one way of doing it. I do think in later movies, they also had it. Uh, but that's, you know, aside from the point. The point I was getting to is, like, how to make this kind of painting. It's a digital painting. I am rather proud of this myself. Uh, still, when I put up paintings like this on DeviantArt or whatever, I'm just going to go through and show you some of the layers while while I'm talking. But if we go into uh, 
deviant art for example and they have like such good work up there that i can you know i always feel like i'm you know not not up to par in comparison and stuff so i started off with uh, this is the actual if you can make anything out here i was just playing around with perspective and you can see over here there's like a little house or something and then uh you know just mess around with perspective and then it it came to me suddenly i was like hmm, what about that thing i always want to draw it and i started to draw the city in here right and so it just came out in sketch mode like that and let that kind of you know maybe be a lesson that uh to be learned there is sometimes you're just sketching around some suddenly something you forgot you wanted to draw pops into mind or maybe i was thinking about it first i don't know but i was playing around with perspective and suddenly now i was just randomly playing with perspective and that popped in my mind and then what happened after that is i said well if i have this area here where that's my city and that's where the spaceship's going to be and you can barely make it out and here's the wookie i was just playing with the idea if i want to have have this work let me start drawing some lines and you know get some real perspective in there because previously i keep doing this really boring one point perspective partially for educational purposes but i also just get hung up on it myself because it's so easy to do that but if you don't snap out of it then you know you're never gonna gonna move forward so i made this kind of really simple perspective grid and as you can see all the lines coming this way they kind of fan out a little bit they're a little closer up here and a little further down here right that's what you want to happen when you have this uh, two point or three point perspective this should actually uh, qualify as a three point perspective so i really you know <laughs> push the envelope and again here are these lines going this way they're a little bit further fanning out from each other here and a little bit closer over there or at least they're supposed to be and uh that was intended to be the perspective for the uh the building that later on you know came out of this nice sketch that i have here so it's a nicer sketch obviously still a sketch but you can see here's the uh, the spaceship and, and stuff let me put in one of these final images up here so at least we can compare right here's uh almost near the final area and you see when you go to the sketch there i pretty much had everything where i wanted it that's one thing i make sure i do on my sketch if i don't do anything else i you know even like the wookie here um we can see that he is <clears throat> lost my layer there yeah and you see the wookie up here is very very rough but at least i knew exactly where i wanted to be and what was going to go on because that's so important for the perspective and uh, the depth and and the angles and everything to be laid out <clears throat> that's the most important thing you have laying out in the uh in this sketch phase right if you don't do anything in a sketch phase but make sure you have your objects and your perspective uh set up then that that would be the one thing to do i mean that's just the one thing so i did that um that sketch there and i was happy with the perspective and then i just started uh filling in the shade and part of this is just out of excitement because after i had a good sketch and perspective in there i was like oh, i can't wait to see the values in this and i'm not going to you know even talk about that you know i talk about values so much so important after the sketch phase just to get those values in there like that so you have to do that yeah and then this one uh, the only difference between these two is this one didn't have that extra light and i didn't want it to be just a gray on dark gray kind of feeling so i added these extra lights which is like sun rays or sun beams breaking through the trees right and i thought that'd be a really cool effect to really make you feel like you're there so i just added that to the values and then when that was done basic color right so uh and here just uh, filled in all the colors i went right over the value painting that i did using a multiply layer that's explained in uh, in other episodes and stuff after that cleanup work now there's something where i can improve is between here and here i'm just using a really rough method of going in there with a brush and cleaning it up that's not um, recommended uh, that's what i do but it's not recommended i have to find a better way to achieve that and definitely this should be done i think i did this on separate layers for example the uh the these green areas back there one one layer spaceship is definitely always on another layer but at first i put all the trees on one layer later i decided they needed to be separate because you have like this big front main tree and then the back trees so that did happen eventually but i might have, <laughs> I might have went about it the the long way 
uh, yeah, different ends, different means. So then I ended up here and uh, got rid of all those sketchy lines, or almost all of them, as you can see. Just cleaned it up after coloring it a bit. And then finally, we got to this stage where I was relatively done getting rid of those sketch lines and some shading, uh, more advanced shading is starting to come in. And you can see I went from this uh, that green background where it was just nothing. Uh, everything has a little bit of texture to it at, at this point. So after you get your basic colors down, then you go in with the shading and make sure your layers are separate for the uh, you know the background, the foreground, and super foreground as I call it and stuff like that. It's probably a better word for that, but anyway, I like my words. I got my own special words. And so let's see how that happened in layers. There's a backup, an older backup there. Yeah. Um, so those are all all my backups and all of these I just showed you. They're just uh, uh, backup images that uh, you know I use uh, I make a new visual um, make new from visual I basically just flatten uh, everything in the scene out into one layer and back it up so that basically I can do this later so I can come back and see how I progress through it I like to do that myself even if I wasn't making videos but so that's what happens um, so here is that that back bush part if you look at the near finished product here and you see all the bushes down there I just used uh, you know, a brush with a little jitter on it, which in, uh, you know, if you use GIMP, it has jitter. That means it, well, you know, it does jitter. I'll explain that some other time. And you can probably tell I didn't make the bush, uh, this, uh, the bush and tree background area by itself. It was just between everything else. And so I, I you know, I drew it where it needed to be drawn, basically. And, you know, that's it. That's how simple it is. Uh, then after that layer, there's this one, which is the background trees. Then I wanted some mist for this layer too, because uh, everything, when I paint it, I paint it with all the same colors. And then I just figure later on, if I need it to fade off into the distance, well, I'll add a layer such as I did here. And I also use this to add some highlights and mist and stuff. And then the same thing with the mid ground, it comes in and boy, was there a lot of work put into that, right? Yeah, as you can see, it's just, and it could even, I would spend a whole nother day just on this tree, adding little details, but you got to stop at some point in time and say, when is it done? And basically it's done when you got your point across and I've got my point across. So, you know, that's enough detail for that. I could definitely add better lighting to it now in reflection, but that's, that's what it is. And then my sunbeam, uh, sun rays coming through here. They were actually coming through on the top, but you'll see why uh, they were better off uh, right here. And then after that, there's the foreground, which has the spaceship and the bottom of the, the foreground big tree. And some of these vines are coming down because they really added a lot when I, you, you know, sometimes things just look boring and not realistic because it's, you, you never see things in nature. It just looked like a bunch of plain trees standing up with sitting next to bushes and you know a little boy and a dog right unless it's like one of those uh, crown drawings you do so adding those unique little things like the the, the vines hanging down from the trees and stuff was uh, it, it added something that I really liked um, then after that I have one more of these mist highlight layers that helped out a bit just needed it there and then the uh, the last uh, most foremost layer here is this the uh, the Wookiee hanging from from that part of the tree and as you can see I added a lot of detail on the part where he's hanging from the tree in the foreground within you know within within visible range within a very close range so you can see all the details on his hair even and everything and uh, this image is not intended to be seen like this close up it's intended to be seen like uh, you know depending on how big your screen is about yay big maybe if you're viewing this on YouTube maybe about that big that's about as big as I wanted to get because if I were to put so much more detail in that you had to you know every bit of fur and, and hair was in there well then I would have to balance that out by putting just as much detail for all this bark and a bunch of other stuff and and all the leaves there and you know at some point you just got to say this is the level of detail and that's as far as it goes just like that right so put the whole thing together that's it and uh, you know flip it back back and forth every once in a while just make sure that everything looked balanced it was not easy to get the perspective on those buildings even just you know look reasonable right now they're still a little bit out of whack but I think again 
they do the job you know how much time do I really need to spend on it it's not like I'm actually doing an architecture project for a real building it's just a fantasy painting <laughs> so leave it there right and that's about that so for this episode that's all I hope you enjoyed that looking through that and uh, we'll have more coming up soon I'm gonna get out of the fantasy painting thing uh, a little bit it'll become uh, I'll still be doing it on the side. I have a bunch of stuff that I want to do. I'm working on some... I want to keep on this kind of trend with, like, the fan art. I'm going to do something for Dune. But, you know, the fan art is, like, the good stuff, not the cheesy stuff, hopefully. Getting us some good, like, literature type of fan art. I'm going to go to Dune and, and uh, uh, the Blade Runner, which is the electric sheep novel. Things that I've read, not just uh, things that I've watched movies from. Because that way you're not really using your imagination as much, right? You're just copying what somebody else did. So... Uh, good literature and fantasy and sci-fi stuff that I've read. I want to help bring out some of my imagination, my real imagination, <clears throat> not assisted imagination. A real, you know, imagination comes out when you're reading. You get all those vivid images in your head that you want to share with somebody. I feel like that's more unique and original, and uh, therefore fun. You see new things that way. Um, we'll do that. And then I'm at the same time going to be getting back into the Dwarf Fortress comic. I uh, just got back into the States. Should be settled here for a while. Very happy about that. And uh, that's it for this one. See you soon. See you again next time. I should have a lot of videos coming out. And have a good one. See ya. Bye.